All right, you beautiful, fine folks. We are on the Lord's time now. I don't know why y'all put up with me. I really don't. Oh, don't worry, I'll wait. You're good. We'll let these last few trickle in. The last man to sit down leads open in prayer. If you hurry, if you hurry up, Jason, it'll be Keith. I know you will. I know you will. I'm probably going to pick on Bill Spakes this morning, though. She's around here somewhere. It's fine. Just enjoy the peace and quiet while you can. Hey, I, I'm not married to her. I'm not going to be the one that gets in trouble. I run fast when I'm scared. We're almost there. Almost there. Good morning. Hey, hey! she's behind you, Jason. Don't look. All right, well, as we usually do, we're going to open, a, open up our study this morning with some prayer. And Bill Spakes, if you would be so kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Happy Easter. That is today, right? Good Friday was last Friday, so I just usually, usually the next Sunday after Good Friday is Easter. All right, so Matthew. We're going to just go ahead and stay there. I was going to do this whole thing with the Islam and Catholicism and Marx, not Marxism. Uh, I mean, we can talk about Marxism, but not Marxism. Uh, Lutheranism, Calvinism, and all this stuff, all the isms. Um, but I'm going to put that off until probably, probably next time because I don't like the way that it's shaping up uh, as far as presenting the material. Uh, it seems the way, that I'm, the way that I had it done in my thought process originally, it was a little combative. And I don't want it to be combative. I want it to be informative. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to beat anybody to death around here. Okay. So we're going to stick with Matthew. Last week, we finished up the Beatitudes and we started getting down into a little bit more of the meat of the Sermon on the Mount. So as you guess, we're going to be somewhere between Matthew 5 and Matthew 7 for the most of the morning. So if you want to start there and put a card in it so that you can always flip back to it real quick because we're going to jump around all over the place, I'm sure, because you guys know a lot of things that I don't. And y'all can teach me as I, uh, I don't know, talk in y'all's direction. <laughs> so who well let's do let's do this all right so because there's a couple of people in here that i haven't been in here with me for a while um uh, sorry but eyelash my eye and it is being very obstinate get out of there i can see okay so matthew written by matthew who was the guy who used to run around with jesus right he was a disciple matthew's record of the sermon on the mount is Jesus talking, right? Who is Jesus talking to? Jews, because Christians didn't exist, right? There were no Christians for him to talk to that day. So he was talking to a bunch of Jews, a bunch of Jews, and a few, maybe a few Gentiles running around in the background somewhere, right? But mainly the focus that day, he was talking to Jews because Jesus was a, he lived as a, and he died as a, he did not die as a, because there were no, there were only, there you go, and Gentiles. You know, look, it has only taken me five years to get y'all to do that right there. <laughs> Baby steps. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Okay, so Jesus, a Jew, is talking to Jews about Jew things, right? 
Judaism, which is the basis of Christianity, New Testament Christianity. Okay. So, we stop. Yes, Lord? We stop somewhere around light under a bushel. Oh, no, I'm going to let it shine. So let's jump to Matthew 5, 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth shall pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments is teaching and and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, some of your translations guarantee you're going to say uh, smallest stroke or tittle or iota of the law, right? Smallest mark. So that iota is the little, the little stroke in the Greek language, the little stroke over the tiny eye, right? I know y'all were burning to know that. So I just wanted to make sure y'all knew that. That's your linguistic study for the entirety of the day. So, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. Somebody educate me. What? Was to fulfill the law. So, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees were throwing fits at Jesus about how he was talking against the law and speaking against the prophets and blaspheming the uh, Abraham and Moses and the law. What was happening? Yeah, they thought that he was trying to become, you know, greater than the law, that he was teaching against the law in some forms, right? So that's why they were constantly throughout the New Testament, you'll read about they tried to seize him, they tried to grab him, they tried to get him. And they did in the end, right? Thank goodness. He thought they were he was trying to usurp them. Now, what's the problem with that? What's the problem with Jesus usurping the Pharisees and the Sadducees? What would be wrong with that? Well, uh, he did, 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 did. Thank you. Thank you. Uh oh, somebody hit that nail right on the head. So the reason that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were upset about Jesus usurping them is because they liked it having the powers because in their humanistic form that they had so very graciously taken the form of and replaced Judaism with, they weren't following the law. So when somebody showed up who was, it became a problem. A big problem. That's why the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't like Jesus. Because they had it real nice. And, so, most of us have all worked a job at some point in our lives, right? And you know how some jobs are nice and easy. And you can kind of lay back and just rest on your laurels. And then all of a sudden somebody else comes in doing the same job. And they do it in half the time and make you look like a fool. Right? No, is that never just me. Okay, got it. All right. So they didn't like that somebody else came in and was teaching the law more accurately. So, like, we have another example of that, right? In uh, what is it? Acts. There's a certain certain guy who's preaching the gospel of Jesus, but he knew nothing of the baptism of Jesus. So they took him aside and taught him more accurately, right? That sounds biblical. Or, or did I make that up? Oh, okay, Apollos. So it needed to be taught more accurately. But what's the difference between Apollos and the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Apollos was sincere. Whew, yeah. He was, thank goodness somebody taught me the right way before I was teaching these others, teaching others, teaching others, teaching others. And they know they're teaching wrong. And they know that they're teaching wrong, and yet what do they do? Stone him because, well, you know, I make a lot of money as a Pharisee. 
I got all this, you know, and I got nice, and people, when I walk down the street, people move out of my way. I'm a Pharisee. And they like that, right? Who wouldn't? But then Jesus showed up, and he said things like, do not think that I have come to abolish the law. Pharisees, Sadducees, don't worry, I'm not here to abolish the law. I'm here to fulfill it. So guess what? You better toe the line. Oh, we don't want to. Well, too bad. Came to abolish the law and the prophets. But I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. So as Pharisees and Sadducees and as educated Jews, just the general people, they should have known, right, that the Messiah was going to come and that he was going to fulfill the law and he was going to do away with the need for the uh, ritual sacrifice, the, the entirety of Leviticus and the sacrificial system. He, they, they should have known. But they didn't because people did what people do best and they perverted things to suit their own needs, right? So Judaism had become perverted. People just mess everything up, don't they? If it wasn't for all the people, this place would be awesome. What's up, Jason? Hang on just a minute. Let me teach you the law. And then, hey, he's doing both. Just, I mean, you're 100% right there. He's doing both. Because the law had been perverted because humans do what humans do and humans want what humans want. So they had perverted it. And then I like the way you put it, dragging him around by the nose. By You know, we had an old bull one time. Remember that one had the nose ring in it? He was, he was a touch obstinate when it came to fences and things. But uh, it came time to get rid of that bull. And... Uh, that's a big, he was a big creature. I'd say he was every bit 2,000, 22. I mean, he was a big old horror for bull. And he wouldn't go in the trailer. He wasn't having it. But we had managed before to get a ring in his nose and about four foot of chain. Keep him from jumping fences. Because, you know, if they go up and they start around on that fence, that chain gets hung in a barbed wire, and then they're, they're going to stay there. We couldn't get him in the trailer. So in my infinite wisdom and uh, much more bravery than brains, stupidity. yes, stupidity is the correct word, uh, there's a little hatchway on the side of cattle trailers, a lot of cattle trailers, where you can, you can climb in from the outside. So I open up that, that door, and I climb, I climb in, and I walk up very, very gingerly to this bull, and I slide down because he's just free as a bird at this moment in time and I grab a hold of the very last link of that chain and I pick it up it's kind of start backing up a little bit and it starts to get a little taunt and he kind of raises his head up a little you know head up a little bit and I, and I just went Pah! pop that chain <clears throat> that bull followed me right into that trailer led him like a horse just Come on, come on, bud. Of course, I was awful nervous. And I got to that door and I dove through it. But took him by, he, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were taking those people by the nose. And he was saying, all right. And I, I would like to think some of them did it the way, you know, the nice and ginger. Okay, you know, this is the way the law should be. Let me teach you, let me educate you. No! 
You're not going to follow it the way that it's written. No, you're going to do it the way I like it because it makes me more money. But yeah, the perversion of the law. So he didn't come to abolish the law, but in fact to fulfill it. And in order to fulfill it, he had to educate the people as to what it actually was. And that's where we get throughout the rest of this. You have heard that it was said, but I say unto you. You have heard from the people of old, but I say unto you. Jesus wasn't changing anything about the law. Not the littlest stroke, not the iota, not the tittle. I like that word. He wasn't changing anything about the law. But what upset people about that is that he was more accurately explaining the law. So when he said, I'm here to fulfill it, they should have known that he was there to teach them and then do away with the law after all is completed. Now the all is completed was death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Because without the... Totally disagree. Okay. I mean, I'm all ears. Love it. You know what? You're right. I just taught y'all very inaccurately because on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. Therefore, finishing it. No? Well, I missed that one too. That's why I said I wish you would teach class, Zeke. It would be freaking cool. No, we wouldn't. They let me stay up here. Matthew 24 and where? That's a big study, yeah. Very much. I can see. I can, see, I can see exactly what you're talking about from a, line, from a line of logic and reasoning. But then, you know, you have some obstacles that you've got to jump over to get there. So, throughout the entirety of the New Testament, Jesus' blood was the ultimate sacrifice, right? So, at the ultimate sacrifice, no other sacrifice is necessary. So, in order for us to get, to, to get over that obstacle of, well, okay, heaven and earth didn't pass away until the destruction of the temple. We have to then find a way, scripturally, to not justify, what's the word I'm looking for? To blend together the idea that after the sacrifice of Jesus' blood, there were still sacrifices necessary. So, in Hebrews, when we talk about that blood and the sacrifice then again why are you then again sacrificing right so if the sacrifice of Jesus' blood that fell on the cross wasn't sufficient for the propitiation to put to the end the need for sacrifice and it was actually something at 70 a.d when the temple was destroyed then there's those 40 20 what's 33 minus 70 those number of years, I don't do, this is church, not math class. So those number of years, 
that sacrifices were either just put on hold because the sacrifice of Jesus was sufficient, or sacrifices were necessary because Jesus was insufficient. It's a, it's a weird... For sure. Yeah, before he died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the Mosaic Law, Judaism. What you what you got there, Jane? While he's reading reading back. Look. Yeah. But it's not it's not an either or. Well I, I disagree with you. I think when Joe put that verse out of this just said, I don't know if you did it. But that's the only thing we know about. Yes. So I mean and that that's that's more written to the Jews for the Jews. Right. Yeah. So I think the main thing to remember here, the most important part is so at the end of the day, whether it was seventy AD, the cross, or still coming. He still said what he said. I am the end of the law. Okay, let me, let me unparaphrase then. Jesus said, I came to finish it, to accomplish it, to fulfill it. Everybody agrees on that? Yes? Because if you don't agree on that, you're just wrong. Just <laughs> flat out, okay? Because that's, that's Jesus' words from his face hole. He came to fulfill it. If the law is not fulfilled today. Uh, oh, we're, 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 we're making the full circle. If the law is not fulfilled today. March 31st? 31st. 2024, why are we here? The law is fulfilled. Because Jesus said so. Now, when he said, it is finished on the cross, did he mean the law is finished? Or did he mean, I'm going to go home now? I have done everything that I was supposed to do. 
Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus, yeah, yeah, here, Jesus said, it is finished. What did he finish? Everything that he was sent to do was finished. Because if it wasn't, if there is one jottle, jottle, jot or tittle that Jesus did not finish when he said, it is finished, he lied. Did Jesus lie? Or it was misinterpreted, which is also possible. But through lines of logic and reasoning, if Jesus said, it is finished, we have no reason to expect that it is not finished. Hang on, Kelvin, I'm, I, I need to get through what I'm doing. If Jesus said, it is finished, and there is something that is not finished, that makes Jesus incapable of finishing it, correct? Because he's dead and gone, raised, resurrected, and ascended. He's not coming back until he comes back. And he said when he comes back, it's all done. So if it wasn't finished when he said it was finished, let's go to the house. Right? If Jesus is wrong, if Jesus is wrong in any way, any shape, any form, everything that he said is moot and garbage. Because Jesus also said, Scripture cannot be broken. So if Scripture could be broken... By him not finishing what he said, it is finished, you are wasting your time, you are wasting your time, I am wasting my time, Zeke is wasting his time, Rex is definitely wasting Rex's time. Rex doesn't have time to waste. He's old. I might. Verse 18. For truly I say unto you, until heaven and earth shall pass away, not the smallest stroke of the law, smallest letter or stroke of the law shall pass away until all is accomplished. Until heaven and earth shall pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of the law from the law shall pass away until all is accomplished. Okay, Kelvin. And died. Well, that's number one up there. And there's other stuff got to happen too. With, with, without that sacrifice, without that, and without him finishing what he did here on earth, without that, none of the rest of it, the church would not have been established. Nope. There would not have been, there would not have been any separation from Jew and Gentile. No. Nope. There would have been nothing. Well, there was separation from Jew. There wouldn't have been a well, coming there together. Would have been any, yeah. There would have remained segregation. So, so without that finishing that life, finishing those things that he was sent here to do, nothing else would have been. And we would be sitting here today without any hope. Yeah. Because we would have to go back to the Jewish law. Wait, wait a minute. Well, I mean, the, no, that, that's a, it's a broad stroke. It's a correct stroke, but it's a broad stroke because Jesus proved that the law could be fulfilled. So mm, this idea that the law, you know, people could not keep the law, uh, it's a, that's muddy water. But verse 18, because I'm not going to skip over it. Hang on just a minute, Mama. 
For truly I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass away, heaven and earth will remain and be gone. As long as they exist, not one stroke of the law, not one stroke of the law will pass away until all is accomplished. Until all is accomplished. So if all is accomplished, is not Jesus on the cross. Fulfilling the sacrifice and fulfilling the Old Testament requirements? For, to, pro, pro, yeah, to Fulfilling the prophecies. Yes. No, not 100%. Because there were prophecies that were yet to be fulfilled at the time of Jesus' death. So you have to just, we have to be able to say that by the time Jesus died, when he said, it is finished, all had to be accomplished here. Otherwise, Zeke is right. What does that mean? And if we can't prove what that means, then we are maybe spinning our wheels a little bit. So we have to justify those. Heaven and earth. <coughs> yeah, figurative language. Because a flat, a flat literal, you know, if heaven has to pass away, well, heaven is eternal, so it can't. You know what I mean? So you're, you're right. But we have to be able to nail down in the context of Jesus saying it is finished in the context of 518, you have to be able to nail that down. Because if you can't nail that down, then it slips out into the shadows. Randy. If you want to be technical, your translation says must be fulfilled. Now, now in the, con in the context, we, we do know what Jesus is talking about. Right? The things that he needed to do had to be done, and they were done. Right? Otherwise, he wouldn't be saying it as a resurrected, but as an un uncrucified. Because that's, that's the point. That's the line. You and I get one go around. He got one go around. So everything that he had to do in order to fulfill his purpose had to be done by the time he was dead. Just like Kelvin doesn't get to have a redo. Once Kelvin dies, Kelvin's dead. Once I die, I'm dead. I don't get to come back and, as a new baby and try again. Had to come back again. It's because I don't understand it very well. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, it, it can. <laughs> Every study can lead to eternal consequences. If you just go, this is stupid, I quit. You know, like, that's, that's a big deal. Don't do that. All right? Because we've, we've bounced a lot of big ideas back and forth this morning. But I can guarantee you this. Zeke. You and I see things just a little bit differently concerning this verse. Uh, do I still have a chance of going to heaven? Because I know you do. What did you say? That's, that's what I'm saying. That's the point, is there's big ideas going on this morning. Don't let any of that, don't let any of that get in the way of the point. Juanita, before, I cut her off like eight times. Don't let any of these big ideas and get in the way, because at the end of the day, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So I'm going to the Father. I promise I'm going. Because every knee is going to bow on the day of judgment, and every tongue is going to confess. Whether they did it in life or did it in death, they're going to. So I'm going to go to the Father, which means I'm going to go through Jesus, which means he had to be right about what he said. Now, whether I fully understand every that he said in the context and that he said it and the way that he said it and the, all the minutia of the things that he said, I probably never will. I probably never will. But the fact of the matter is, I'm still going to make it just like everybody else who does what, the, what New Testament Christianity says to do. Regardless of what building they worship in, what country, whatever. No, you got to do it. You got to do it. There are certain things you just got to do it. Okay, now Juanita, I cut you off umpteen times. Okay. I take exception with the finished instead of fulfilled. There's a big difference. I can take a pattern to make a dress, and I can finish that dress without following all the instructions. Mm -hmm. So I haven't fulfilled the pattern. Mm -hmm. But, but you finished, finished it. Mm -hmm. the garment. So I think that the whole idea of changing that fulfilled to finish is where the confusion arises. Jesus is the one who said finished. That's right. And that's what he meant. It is finished. All is fulfilled. Everything that has been prophesied is complete, is finished. From that point on, when he died on the cross, a whole new time began. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So by changing that fulfill to finish, leaves loopholes. But in the context of what Jesus is saying, when he says it is finished, he even further After backs it up. He, was on the cross. he says, when he, came, when he came back in Luke, that Randy pointed out, everything prophesied about him was finished. Finished. And that's what this is talking about. Until not one jot nor tittle will pass away until all is fulfilled. Fulfilled. Not just finished, but all is fulfilled. Agreed. Now. You're pretty when I, you're angry. <laughs> I'm not angry. I, I know, I know, I know. But I couldn't hear a thing that was being I, I, I know, and as I, uh, my, maybe I should have let you hold my hand and sit with me this morning so you could hear everything. <laughs> I did. I shooed you. I said, you can get back to your seat where you belong. Shh. But no, you're right. There is a difference between fulfilled and finished, and that's a language study that we can do another day. But when Jesus said, it's finished, so if he said it's finished and he didn't, did, could everybody hear Juanita, what she was saying about the difference between fulfilled and finished? Okay. So Jesus did, in fact, you know, go through all the patterns of his dress. In, in the context of your day. He, he, he fulfilled the pattern as well as finished it at the same time. God, this is fun. I love, I love this so much. Any more questions? I know we have to remember that even the disciples kept saying the world will the whole time he was talking and coming and everything. We have to remember that he, he mostly talked about spiritual, he's not talking about worldly when he talked. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a fact. Okay, so we have exactly... Oh, oh, that's, that's right. Uh, yeah, you, have, you have 30 seconds because I need one more minute. Okay, so Christ can be saying two things. He can be saying this moment, this physical act fulfills these things. But also... 
also, he's saying, and the rest is coming. Because Christianity needs to be born. Christianity and all their components needs to be fulfilled from this act. Yeah, which that couldn't be until he... Yeah. And so it can have two meanings at the same time fulfilling this, but this being fulfilled as this physical act happens at this moment. Yeah, for sure. It's like the, the law, you know, the passing away of the law, you know, when Peter had the dream of the sheet, right? All the unclean animals on the sheet, and God said, kill and eat. He said, kill and eat. He said, kill and eat. You know, Peter... Not killing and eating would have been breaking the law because God told him to do it, right? But the law said don't eat things that are unclean. So the waters get muddied there. Okay, I lost. I didn't get my minute. You took too long. All right, well, I sure do love you guys. And I, these are the kinds of classes where the big ideas get shared and, you know, we're trying to strive through the differences of opinion and through interpretation. I love it. So let's come back and do it next week.